Kenya to yet another amazing episode here at Kaluhi's Kitchen. Today we have a gorgeous day and to celebrate that beauty we're going to make something equally as beautiful and simple as well and that is Mahamri. This recipe has been requested by you guys so many times in the past. There's already a recipe on the blog but it would 100% help if we did a video so that you guys can follow it step by step and by the end you too will be a Mahamri professional. It's going to be super easy and I can't wait to walk you through everything. Thank you so much to my returning subscribers and to you who is new here, Asante Sana and thank you for being at the best place on the internet. I hope after this video I earn your subscription. That said, let's begin. <laughs> we are always set and ready to go and I'm going to walk you through each ingredient you're going to use for this recipe as we go along for Mahamri it's pretty obvious the first ingredient that we have to have for this recipe is some all-purpose flour I've used some freezing flour in the past and it's supremely backfired so please follow this recipe as is make sure you use all-purpose flour and that said let's just add this right now so I saw all the flour is now in so for the next ingredients, for a bit of sweetness, of course Mahamri are very, very sweet. Okay, not very, very sweet, but they are sweet. So we need to add a bit of sugar to facilitate and introduce that sweetness onto your palate and into the recipe. Sample use brown sugar. Me, I'm okay with just any kawaida sugar, white sugar, and let kwa chai. Whichever sugar you have, it will still work perfectly. Hiya, sugar is in. Next, we're going to add our rising agent and that is some yeast. Yeast has to be part of Mahamri and it's also pretty easy to find. I bought mine from my local supermarket. There are various packages, various sizes, depending on how often you use your yeast is is what will determine which size of packet you buy but if you're trying this for the first time i encourage you to buy the small sachets which cost around 14 bob which is extremely stupid affordable so you have no excuse and you're going to find it in any well-stocked supermarket guys 14 bob 14 shillings how no excuse for real so we add our yeast this is instant yeast so adding it direct will not have any issue so eh. <laughs> Our yeast is in and then we're going to go in with the spice that is very particular and very very mandatory for Mahamri and that is cardamom aka iliki, my favorite warm spice of all time. You can use store bought cardamom for this recipe which is perfectly fine because it's still cardamom but I personally find whole cardamom a lot more aromatic and a lot more potent in terms of taste and it will 100% be my preference for this Mahamri recipe. For my whole cardamom, I just take my whole cardamom pods, I break them open and once I release the black seeds, I toast them on an ungreased pan and then once they are fragrant, I transfer them to my kinu and then I crush them into my cardamom spice. I prefer having my cardamom as a rough grind. By a rough grind, I mean spending ikikwa so soft and fine because I love having those random pops of cardamom in your mouth as you eat. But if you like your cardamom very, very fine, feel free to crush it as fine as you prefer. But if you like yours as a rough, as a rough grind the way I do as well, crush them kidabo too until they're just rough and a bit big big in terms of the pieces now that that is clear let's go right ahead and add our iliki and just like everything i use in this kitchen and on this channel and on my blog you can find your whole cardamom and cardamom spice in any well-stocked supermarket both are pretty affordable i think both under 100 shillings or under 150 shillings which is still pretty cheap so don't shy away from your spices Nira hisi kupata they're good for your body speaking of cardamom is very good for memory like ku enable you a good memory and then also um, stabilizing blood pressure, enabling good gut health. It's delicious for you and it's good for you. So do not shy away from your spices. Now that is all in our dry ingredients. Let me grab a muiko. So we're just going to give this a nice quick mix. Like it's not a big deal. Just mix it until everything is combined. 
and then once combined which will take literally under a minute we're going to go in with another mandatory ingredient for my hungry and that is coconut milk for my inner inner city dwellers especially nairobi city dwellers remember you can get coconut milk in any well-stocked supermarket if you're in mombasa and you can get fresh coconut milk even better but if you cannot remember you can get coconut milk in any well-stocked supermarket so please 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 guys leverage on what we have because we actually have a lot in our supermarket so just take advantage of that it's pretty affordable as well so um before you go in with the coconut milk someone is going to ask can i use water no you have to use coconut milk for this recipe you also cannot use almond milk also someone is going to ask can i use cow milk no it has to be coconut milk can i use breast milk no it has to be coconut milk strictly coconut milk Staki kuskia almond milk Staki kuskia cow milk milk Staki kuskia breast milk Staki kuskia the alien milk strictly coconut milk that said let's go in and add our coconut milk we're just going to add it bit by bit mixing with each addition and then once it's combined and all the milk is in we're going to go in with our hands proceeding to knead for 15 minutes and then afterwards we're going to let it rest and rise Wow, guys, Hapa, it's a real workout. It's a real, real, real workout. 15 minutes of kneading is not a joke. But you know what? Even if your biceps will be aching at the end of the 15 minutes, your tongue and your palate will thank you for the deliciousness and the softness you're going to enjoy at the end of this. The reason why we need for 15 minutes is because you need to activate the gluten. I know gluten nowadays is a dirty word, but it's not. Gluten is what makes your chapati soft, it's what makes your mandazi soft, it's what makes your cakes nice and bouncy. It's not a dirty word. And by kneading for 15 minutes, that activates that same gluten, which will give you the soft mahamri you're going to enjoy at the end of this. I'm just wrapping up my 15 minutes of kneading. If you're going to knead with a machine that has a kneading hook, knead for 8 minutes. But if you're using your hands like me, just do for 15 minutes. It's not that big of a difference. Kinda. <laughs> and once you're done kneading, as you can see, my dough is very, very, very soft, but it's not sticking onto my hands. That's when you'll know you memaliza vizuri sana. It's going to be very soft, but not sticking onto your hands. Angalia tena. Soft, not sticking onto your hands. That's when you know you're ready. If you're still kneading, but in a koma koma komikono yako, add a few minutes so that it's very soft and no longer sticking onto your hands. Now that my dough is ready, I'm going to grab my bowl, place in my dough, cover with cling film and allow it to rise for 40 minutes. back after an hour and our dough looks nice and spongy and i know it's going to really deliver once we go into the last step speaking of the last step we're now just going to roll it out into a circle it doesn't have to be a perfect circle which is something i really enjoy because hey now roll it out into a circle about half a centimeter thick then cut it into quarters and those quarters are what we're going to proceed to fry in the final and final stage what <laughs> and anyway i hope now mishikanisha this will yield about 16 mahamri you can up the quantities depending on how many people you're cooking for but just remember the ratios that i am going to indicate on the blog now that that is clear let's proceed and wrap this up <laughs>
I totally love it when I try out and make a new recipe with you guys. It turns out beautiful. You have to admit, this looks like the best mahamri in the whole world. And you also have to admit that was a short and very, very simple recipe. That means when you to try this beauty out at home, you're 100% going to eat it. Don't forget, Kamakawaita, the exact recipe quantities are on my blog, link on the description box. Try this out, snap a pic, tag me on any social media platform. Guys, it's my life duty and life purpose to show you off. I hope you liked this video. If you're yet to subscribe, please bonita that red button because I do not want you to miss any video because a lot of deliciousness is for sure coming in the future. For me, it's not time to go and have my breakfast. <laughs> And I know it's going to be a feast of a lifetime for you. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Bye, guys.